It is the bombshell that never exploded in the Casey Anthony case. Good evening. I'm Gart Swanson. And I'm Lauren Rowe. We're talking about crucial evidence that never made it to trial. In fact, Jose Baez was shocked that prosecutors never brought it up. That's right. And today, Tony Pipitone underco uh, he uncovered why. And Tony, the state didn't even know about this. That's right. They didn't know about 99% of Casey's computer activity on the day that Kaylee died. We heard a lot about computer searches during the trial, but not this search about suffocation. Jose Baez knew about it and was all set to say George Anthony did the search. But our investigation reveals the person most likely at the computer was Casey Anthony. Monday, June 16th, 2008, the day Kaylee Anthony died. Her lifeless body pulled from the family swimming pool by her grandfather, George. At least that was Casey Anthony's defense. And shortly thereafter, George began to yell at her. Look what you've done! Your mother will never forgive you, and you will go to jail for child neglect for the rest of your freaking life. So the jury was told George disposed of the body, and he and Casey relaunched their lives in a compact of denial and deceit. This is strange. This is bizarre. This is the life of Casey Anthony. No, the state argued, it was actually the murder of Kaylee Anthony. But they could not prove it despite chloroform, duct tape, and plastic bags. Were there any objects found with the body that would have been capable of causing death? The only possible um, objects with the body, although I don't know if they caused death, would be duct tape, if that duct tape was over the mouth and nose. Suffocation with a plastic bag would have been the only other thing I would have seen there. Could a child exposed to a sufficient amount of chloroform die as a result. Absolutely. So what if prosecutors could have argued Casey Anthony Googled foolproof suffocation on the afternoon Kaylee died, then visited a website that describes advice on how to kill with poisoning and suffocation and plastic bags. Turns out they could have argued that, but an investigation by this attorney in Phoenix, this computer expert in Connecticut, and Local 6 reveals the Orange County Sheriff's Office failed to notice the evidence in computer records they held for three years. While they were clueless, Jose Baez wasn't. We were waiting for the state to bring it up, and when they didn't, we were kind of shocked. Baez revealed the foolproof suffocation search in his book, Presumed Guilty, but he blamed George. So what does it show about consciousness of guilt of someone searching for foolproof suffocation and clicking on a site that deals with suicide? To me, it tells me it's someone feels very guilty of something. So whoever was doing that, you feel, was responsible for Kaylee's death? I don't, I, I don't, I think responsible is too strong a word. If you look in the book, I give out different scenarios of what may or may not have happened. But all those scenarios point to George. When Phoenix attorney Isabel Humphrey heard that, no she did what investigators here did not, get the evidence, and show what was likely Casey. To me, that story was almost as crazy as the nanny story, and so I thought um, I'd really like to see those computer records to see if, uh, in fact, that's what happened. After all, Humphrey thought, it really doesn't take more than 15 or 20 minutes to look through the entirety of the internet history for June 16th, and I would think if there was one day you were going to pick to look at, that would be the day. Humphrey got the computer files from Orange County Sheriff's computer examiner Sandra Osborne, a key witness in the trial. Asked by Humphrey why the evidence never made it to trial, Osborne writes in an email, I was never asked to conduct a search for suffocation, unfortunately. Data in hand, Humphrey enlisted computer expert John Getz, who needed only two hours to extract more than 35,000 browser records dating from 2004 until the computer was seized in July 2008. Getz sent them to Local 6 in August, and here's what we found on the afternoon Kaylee died. At 2.50, after George says he left the home for work, browsers fire up using Casey Anthony's password-protected account. At 2.51, a search for foolproof suffocation, the improper spelling instantly corrected by Google. Five seconds later, a click to this article that criticizes pro-suicide websites, including instructions on how to poison yourself and then follow it up with suffocation with a plastic bag over the head. Poison? The state claimed Casey used chloroform on Kaylee. Suffocation? The duct tape, they argued. Plastic bag? Kaylee's body was found double wrapped in them. Humphrey and Getz could not believe what the state had overlooked. It shows you a state of mind that's present um, 
on the actual afternoon that it appears that the child had died. And the prosecution had no idea that web page was visited on the Anthony family computer that day. No one is more perplexed by that than Jose Baez. Why they didn't bring it up or how it happened, you'd have to ask them about it. I don't understand how no one ever knew about this evidence. Uh, we were keeping it close to the vest and, and ready to uh, counterpunch uh, in the trial, and it never came up. Counterpunch by claiming, as he did in his book, that he had concrete proof it was George, not Casey, on the computer doing that search, and that it actually occurred an hour earlier. But we investigated Baez's claims, and tomorrow at 11, we'll review more on how the evidence points to it being Casey. Incredible. Wow. What does the sheriff's department or even prosecutors have to say about this? How did they overlook this? Well, neither the sheriff nor prosecutors wanted to go on camera about this. Jeff Ashton did tell me, though, quote, it's a shame we didn't have it and that they would have used it to put the accidental death claim in serious question. Prosecutors did request the data from the sheriff's office, but not until eight weeks before trial. The sheriff's office admits it tried and failed to decode the browser Casey used, calling it, quote, an oversight, not incompetence. As for Casey, she's being acquitted, of course. There's no way to retry her. She's not guilty, period. An oversight. That seems so innocuous. That is what they say. And you're not yeah. done tonight. Absolutely not. Um, for an in-depth report, first of all, you can go to the front page of clickorlando.com under the top story section. You'll see much more about the story. And I'm going to be answering your questions right now when I get back in the newsroom on the Local 6 Facebook page about this overlooked evidence. You can find that link also on clickorlando.com. You're going to be busy tonight. I'm sure a lot of people looking for other information. They already have. Yeah. Okay. Start pecking. That's what uh -huh. Tony does. He pecks. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Thank Tony. You, Tony.